Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Hot tub in the foreground, waterfalls in the background. If that doesn't scream live in the aquascape lifestyle, I don't know what does. But you nailed it. Right now, if I were to draw a level line across, that's about waist high. And so people think they want a four foot high waterfall in the backyard. Ooh. This is three and look at how big everything is. What do people that come here for the first time say? This is amazing. This is gorgeous. How did you do this? I didn't do it. <laughs> I had these guys. We are in an overcast day in Elgin, Illinois. I'm with Brian Helfrich, my top lieutenant in the construction department, and we uh, built this pond a year ago, right? Yeah. So I know this guy from church. I've never been to his house. This is exciting. I'm Greg Whitsock, the pond guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitsock, the pond guy, and it's all about how customers live the aquascape lifestyle. Oh, look at it. I can see right through the backyard and see it. <laughs> that is so cool. What's hey, up, Bill? Man. My <laughs> first time here, brother. <laughs> so about what a year ago, Brian said. It was almost exactly yeah, a year almost ago. Exactly a year right. ago. Well, yeah. I can already see it through the house. So I let's, know it. let's go check it out. Right. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Hot tub in the foreground, waterfalls in the background. If that doesn't scream live in the aquascape lifestyle, I don't know what does. So you gotta tell me, what inspired you to do this? You know, we happen to go to the same church, but right. was it that? Where did you find Aquascape? Well, I think it all started, so I met you. Uh-huh. And then went on to your website, and then went on to Pond Tours. Yes, smart. And then after the Pond Tours, that was it. That so we, okay, so <laughs> yeah. actually it was a friend through church. It was because of me that we got this job for yep. Brian. You're always a little spark in the whole <laughs> idea. <laughs> So when you came up the first time, remember? Yeah. Arlene was kind of going, ah, uh, you know, maybe just like right about here. And I was going, no, from way over there to ah, way over there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then we painted that all out and um, we kind of compromised in the middle. This means a little bit smaller, but still to be able to see it from every room in the back of the house okay, and so hear it. I mean, yes. we could be sitting in just the family room with the windows open and you just can hear it. Just yes. I love that sunken feeling. So the idea was to build up this berm just a little bit more because uh -huh. they had the space, which then allowed us to put all these big rocks in and around the back side of this. And what a different perspective of this waterfall when you're sitting here looking at this stream than when you're sitting way over there. One of your design elements mm -hmm. is you want to make sure that you can design a big enough berm so that when you do it, it doesn't look like a volcano spewing lava and you kind of got that here. Well, and they had the space and then look at the height of the trees in there. So it really helps scale things down. But you nailed it. Right now, if I were to draw a level line across, that's about waist high. Yep. And so people think they want a four foot high waterfall in the backyard. Ooh. This is three and look at how big everything is. A lot of people would say this is a five foot, six foot high waterfall. Right. And it's not. Here's the grade and from this backside, I'm just gently, gently sloping up to the height of that biofall is there. You don't really see that ant hill look. What really helps scale the thing down though is then the addition of the spruce trees and you know, you've got some white pines and as these things get bigger and bigger and fill in more and more, that waterfall is gonna look even better. So this is something we love to do all the time and take these big pieces of stone. This is New York bluestone and, and let it cantilever out over the water. So when I'm standing here, I get the feeling that I'm sitting more on a dock. And the way we do that is using a brick material here. So this is an engineered concrete block. And what we've done is set this right on top of our liner. So here's the block. Our liner comes back up and around it like this folds over the top of the block, and then this stone actually holds the rubber liner in place. So we just take that big stone, place it right on top of the block, and we get that big cantilevered edge. The water level set a little lower than normal, but it was because of more of the existing grade to get some of these little babbling brooks. We try to set it so the water level sits all the way up here. This yard, we just couldn't do that. I love this aspect of the pond. I also love two other things, so let me show you those. So of course, with the bluestone patio, we wanted to carry through with a bluestone pathway that led right to a big bluestone bridge. We are looking for these types of pieces all summer long. So every time I go to the stone yard, we're looking for something that looks, you know, four to five feet long and three to four feet wide. 
I love this type of look because it makes the stream look like it eroded right underneath the stone, leaving back behind the stone it couldn't move. My third favorite thing on this project, these waterfalls. So when building a pond or building a waterfall, you're really choosing an artist to work in your backyard. And every artist, whether it's Van Gogh or Picasso or Dali or Escher, obviously all has their own style to do something. Same thing with pond artists. And one style that we have here at Aquascape is bigger rocks and the simplicity of stone with building a waterfall. I love the different textures each one of these waterfalls have. This is a smaller wide sheet of water here with a very distinct sound. But notice how each waterfall is built the same way. Big rock on one side, big rock on the other side, something in between. With the idea, water's eroded away the earth, leaving back the, behind the stones it simply couldn't move. And now check out this waterfall here. The reason I love this waterfall so much is the sound of it. It has nothing to do with the height of it, but the sound. When you take two big rocks and put them that close together, the water gets really thick. And I'll show you how thick I'm talking about. Look at how thick it is here. It's about that thick on my finger. When I choke it down up here, that thick, quite a bit of difference. So you're taking that same velocity of water and instead of spreading it out over 18 inches, we've narrowed it down to three to four inches, causing really, really thick water, which gives you this serious, intense bass sound to it much different than the last waterfall up here. Here we've spread it out a little further. Notice the water actually gets thinner. So the farther and wider you spread that waterfall out, the thinner it's gonna get. The thinner the water gets, the more treble sound you're gonna get off of it. Also, by the way the water comes in contact with the stone will create different sounds. For example, if I were to just take a rock and stick it underneath this waterfall, listen to how much this changes the sound. If I were to put a rock in the middle, different sounds. It's kind of like tuning a piano. So with projects, whenever we can, and we get the opportunity to do this, we love to incorporate driftwood. But I would say there is a right and a wrong way to do this. Here, I'm seeing it the right way. What I mean by that is I want it to look like it's carved in, almost like mother nature and the current of the water has taken that log and at some point the rock has caught it and stopped it. And you see how the water here comes up and that it spits right around that rock? Much more natural than just taking a piece of wood and laying it on top of something. One of my biggest pet peeves is when somebody takes a awesome piece of driftwood and just kind of randomly throws it out onto the pond. Mother Nature would never do that. If it was just laying there, the water would come take it and move it down the stream further and further. This is an awesome example. Let me show you one more down over here. So here Chris has done an amazing job. When I say amazing, I, I'm serious. Like this takes a lot of thinking. This log 100% didn't just fit around this by just laying it there. He probably measured it. He might have even had to cut it, but look at how he's used it to hide the face of that skimmer box. One of the hardest areas to hide in a pond is that front side of a skimmer box. And he's done just an awesome job. Here it looks like it's actually coming up out of the ground. The liner comes up the backhand side of this. And he made sure that the bottom of it didn't go too far down into the water, blocking or hindering any of the leaves and stuff from coming in. Great job, Chris. This looks awesome. Bill, for us, it's great when a customer goes on the pond and garden showcases because they get to see ponds, right. they get to talk to people that own ponds, which is why your very first experience with a water feature, you got a Adelok Escalade, yeah. is what I would call this. Mm. So these massive semis pull up with these massive boulders and we're like, oh, that must be a part shipment for us. They unload them all. And then a second truck comes and they pile all this stuff in our backyard and you're like, what are they building? <laughs> we never we never have problems with the customers yeah. after it's built. It's always when they see the bomb going oh, off. What? This is why we have our certified aquasafe contractors because we want consumers to know that they can trust somebody. So if they're a certified aquasafe contractor, they've gone through our training, they've submitted testimonials from customers, they've submitted photos of their work, they're usually into the train, they come to Pondemonium, they come to our annual events, and so we can recommend them to clients that are interested in a water feature. Mm. If not, it's a, it's a hit or miss out there. And unfortunately, most people miss it, but you did it right the first time, and that's what I love. It's fun for me to see it done right the first time and have a buddy from church right. that has Amen. an aquascape water feature and is living the lifestyle. Right. Hey, if you want to see cool people like this that Brian has done incredible work for, like, comment, subscribe to this channel so more people can see what living the aquascape lifestyle is all about. I love my job. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, hey guys. <laughs> I, I love the dogs.
I haven't been here in a long time. It's amazing how full it looks. How many years now have you had this? We were trying to figure it out. I think it was 2010 we put it in. The reason I know the mandralas yeah. and will always remember them, the swing set in my yard came from here. Oh, how nice. Yeah. So we came up and we saw you sitting here. Is this kind of one of your routines? Uh, yeah, morning time, <laughs> I'm definitely sitting here. It's definitely. a perfect morning. I have my coffee in the morning. I sit out here and oh, it's all good. So, so I see you have the heron uh, to turn up. And that works great. I've had not a problem with it since I started putting it up. And yeah. I love the garden. You're doing a great job on the garden. Thank you. So the Patients are planted right by the water, huh? Oh, so they yeah. just they, go in there. They go like nuts. They've got the water flow and constantly nutrients. Well, and it's, a, in. it's the right amount of sun and shade here too for our right. patients. It, again, this time of year we're getting the sun coming in, so they're going to dry up a little bit. For how big it is, it doesn't look so big from here because it goes way, way up there. Yes. But we did this in like two days, right? Oh yeah, you were done. It was fast. Yeah, yeah the digging yeah. was easy and access was easy. Access Watch, was easy. Watching you sit out here, lay on the ground, look <laughs> at the grade of the, the land and everything, it was, yeah. it was fun because he took probably an hour doing that. It's a jigsaw yeah. puzzle, you yeah. know, how you put everything together, but it's so nice to see a filled in water feature. It's fun for us to come back and visit that. Right. So when we pulled up, the homeowner was sitting right there and she said that was her routine. They had a heron issue, yeah. which we were just talking about. This little heron prevention, it's probably one of the better ones I've seen in terms of it's not very obtrusive. Yeah. I just love how it's low profile. You know, the use of the fishing line and the transparency of the fishing line just makes it And then invisible. the stakes, they yeah. make it a little bit higher so the herons are not gonna wanna wade in as much here. My favorite thing about this water feature is it just draws you in. You just wanna keep walking all the way along here. So like every project we do, we try to draw people from the house and they've got this gorgeous house and they've just built this gorgeous pavilion that would have never been there if this wasn't here. And so this arbor actually frames out a waterfall. But what I love about this feature so much is like what Greg said earlier, that it just keeps drawing it in and you keep discovering more and more. So as you come through here and you're drawn towards this waterfall, which is actually the start of the whole thing, where the biofall sits in our main filtration, then you discover the bridge. The bridges are one of my favorite. You'll see it in so many of our designs. I just love incorporating bridges. When you can cross water, it just instantly makes you feel like you're part of the project. And the bridge in this case actually takes you to two different spots. We can go to the left where she's got her potting shed over here and a lot more garden. And you can tell that she's definitely got a couple green thumbs because she is great with the plants. Or you can go right and something you would have never seen from this side of the stream or down by the house is this really peaceful sitting area underneath these oaks and hickories. They've got this nice fire pit. And she said this time of year, they'll start using this a whole lot more. So as the night air starts cooling down and you can sit out here and have a fire, like to sit here and look at this gentle meandering stream is just something I want. You know, in fact, we actually talked about it while we were sitting here. You always want what you can't have and I have a pretty great pond. You know, I love my pond, but I would love nothing more than to have this gentle meandering stream cutting through my yard. And here they could do it because the topography just lent this to happen. It just kind of carved out, making it look like the water eroded away the earth, kind of leaving back behind these big stones. In a couple spots, you know, there's some rocks that you can walk out to. She's done a great, great job with the impatience like we talked about earlier. But I, this is definitely my favorite spot from right in here. She was actually one of very few customers that, um, well, both her and her husband said, let's tone it down a little bit. We had a much stronger pump kind of going through here with a lot more current. And I actually agree with them. I like the soft, gentle flow of this stream. It's not overwhelming and it's very, very bird friendly. One of the big parts with the design was, was also to attract those birds. So you can see in certain areas, we've got like this beach area over here where the gravel just kind of effortlessly goes from in the water then out of the water we intentionally sloped some of these rocks like these little shallow areas birds just crave for this rock just gently slopes up so they love this and you'll see these kind of speckled throughout the entire design here what makes or breaks every project is the way it's planted and she's done a fantastic job what do people that come here for the first time say this is amazing this is 
coaches, how did you do this? I didn't do it. <laughs> I had these guys do yeah. it. Yeah. Well, thank you for the hospitality. Oh, we you. always love to come back and see cool customers that are gardeners that are helping live the aquascape lifestyle. We want to inspire more people to do just that. And so like, comment, subscribe so more people could see what this is all about. I love my job. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Thanks.